Circle Scouts. It's great to see you. Welcome to Inspiring Futures. Um, I'm Katie Hurstein, and I'm the Program and Events Manager at Girl Scouts of Colorado. And I get to work with some fabulous women and uh, to bring you Inspiring Futures so you can learn about their professions and see where they're growing from, um, educational-wise and career-wise. And you can be inspired to perhaps do what they do in your future. So um, I have a partner that we work with for Inspiring Futures called College Invest. They are Colorado's college savings program. And I have a video to show you from the CEO of College Invest. Girl Scouts, we're here at the Girl Scout Dreamland with Angela Bai. Angela is the CEO of College Invest. I've participated in lots of the Inspiring Futures programs, but my favorite has been the one with people from SeaWorld because I would like to work with animals someday. Lily, what's been your favorite? My first inspiring future video was the one about giving people the light pictures for the circus because I've always wanted to know how lights work or what moves them. Angela, when you were a what future film inspired you? That's a great question, Lily. When I was a young girl, I dreamed of working at the Denver Zoo, and when I turned 30, that dream came true. But what's most important at your age is to see that absolutely anything is possible. And so through Inspiring Futures, presented by College Invest, you get to meet some amazing women. Women who are working with animals, racing cars, catching criminals, helping those in need, and so, so much more. And so girls, let's be inspired. Great. So a little bit more about College Invest. So as I was saying, they're Colorado's college savings plan and program. So um, it's basically a program where uh, caregivers or yourself can open an account and put it money into your account that grows and grows and grows. And when you're ready for an educational experience after high school, whether it's a apprenticeship program, trade school or college anywhere across the country, you can use the money that has put into College Invest um, to pay for that. And it comes out of that account tax free. So you're not taxed on it. So it's a, it's a pretty neat experience to have um, a college invest savings plan to grow to help you pay for things after high school. So um, just a couple of housekeeping items next. Um, so you heard probably that we're recording this session and uh, we will put it up onto our Inspiring Futures YouTube channel so that any girls who were unable to make it tonight, um, Girl Scouts can watch it on our Inspiring Futures YouTube channel. And you're welcome to go there too and see any of the past uh, recordings that we have on there from a whole variety of professions. So there is that. Um, if anybody wants to unmute, you can join me in the Girl Scout uh, Promise and Law. If not, I'm happy to do it alone too. Are you ready? On my honor, I will try I will to, to serve, serve God, God in my country, and, my country to help and help people live. at all times mm -hmm. and to live by the Girl by Scout the Girl law. Scout. Well, and the law I'm is... We'll be promised to be honest and fair, friendly, friendly and helpful, helpful, considered and caring, caring courageous, courageous, strong, responsible for what I say and do, and to respect myself and others, respect authority, use resources wisely, make the world a better place, and be a sister to every Girl Scout. Well, with that, I want to introduce Ash. Um, Ash and I connected, uh, I don't know, maybe two, three months ago and heard all about Hardy and Fuller and um, just the inspiring future, uh, inspiring a story about um, the shop being all inclusive to everybody that wants to be there. And um, I will stop sharing my screen and uh, we'll, Ash will take it from here and show us everything of what it's like to be um Sorry, I'm just going to do one thing. I interrupted myself. 
There you go. All right. There you are. Hi, Ash. Thanks for joining us. Hi. It's me. I'm Ash. <laughs> um, I'm really excited to be here. I've never done anything like this, so I'm very excited about it. Well, I've done, I don't know. I talk a lot, so I forget <laughs> what I talk to. <laughs> Great. It's it's amazing to see the I'm shop behind weird. you. Find that out. Yes, this is my shop. It's all here. You may or may not see my dog, Sugar Crazy Face, walking in and out. She just wanders around. <laughs> cool. Well, I have a presentation, so hold on just a second. And I have this one. No, no, I did it wrong. How do I do this? Escape. I there can we go. Start from screen. screen. Okay. How about there we go? Okay. Can you guys all see this thing that's happening on here? Yeah, we sure can. Yeah, cool. Okay. Awesome. Um, well, Hardy and Fuller is my business. Uh it's called Hardy and Fuller a Metal Space. Um, and it's a metal focused maker space. So like all things metal um uh, metal and fire specifically i'm very into fire um and so i am very excited to share this with you guys um if you have any questions you know type them in the chat or i'm not super familiar with zoom but you can go ahead and i think there's a way that you're like you raise your hand i don't know i'll i'll see it in the chat though but um i have this is me <laughs> i'm very silly all the time um, honestly, I, I could never have envisioned myself working in any kind of office because I'm constantly dirty. <laughs> That's why these pictures look that way. Um, I couldn't wear office clothing. I just couldn't sit at a desk forever. Uh, so, you know, I chose something that was going to work for me and my personality. And this worked really, really well for that. Um, and yeah, I can be as weird and silly as I want to be, which is good. Uh, my next slide. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm... Oh, I just turned 32. I'm a Scorpio, if you care. Uh, I started this business two years ago when I turned 30. And uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens. It's very surprising and exciting and scary. And, you know, all of the things that starting a business is like. And uh, I just, my goal is just to bring a space to people that they can really enjoy being in and to share creativity and to create community um, in that way. Uh, that's really important to me. So yeah uh, so my next slide is a video that kind of walks through the shop so you can kind of understand what the shop looks like and about me and the shop okay if it will do it there it is Yes. Every time I watch that movie, I'm like, oh, goodness, don't put me on film. It's always so silly. But, oh, no, I did it again. How do I get out of here? I go like this. OK, <laughs> no more playing it. These are just some pictures from my shop. Um, that's Sugar Crazy Face. It's a makerspace. She's our shop supervisor. In fact, she's actually um, a master blacksmith. She just doesn't have any thumbs because there was a terrible accident uh, where she became a dog. So no thumbs. Um, so she just supervises everyone and tells them what to do and then gives a lot of emotional support <laughs> while you're creating. Um, this is my forge. Her name is Your Majesty. Um, I get a lot of welders and I have women's only blacksmithing night. Um, you know, we do a lot of weird, fun stuff here. Lots of fire and metal, like I said. Um, so I get a lot of questions about what blacksmithing is um, because 
it's just like a random thing. And I'm sure you've all seen Forged in Fire. Everybody who comes into my shop, even if you haven't seen it, like I would say 90% of the people who come into my shop are like, have you seen Forged in Fire? And I'm like, yes, I have seen Forged in Fire. I definitely have. In fact, I have some friends uh, that have won their episodes of Forged in Fire. Um, one of my friends who lives in Boulder, he was the youngest to win at 17 um, on Forged in Fire. Uh, not all blacksmiths make knives. I am not a knife maker. I have made my fair share of knives, uh, especially when I began blacksmithing like 12 years ago. I made knives, but it's just not my thing. Um, I like art. I like to make art. So I'm the type of blacksmith that forges like the big gates that you see on castles and like i just like to make art out of steel and different types of metal um so a blacksmith is is a metal smith and they usually use iron iron was the old way um the old material that we used and steel is a mixture of carbon and iron um it's stronger and more versatile so we switched to steel um you can also forge aluminum and brass and copper um if they're large enough they just are formed are forged at different temperatures um, and you use a plethora of tools. My shop is filled with tools, and uh, mostly I use hammers. I love me a good hammer. Sometimes if there's something in my house I can't fix, I'm like, well, can I just hammer it? Exactly, Izzy. That's correct. Hammer in real hard. It's super strong because I hammer. <laughs> and I love it. It's my favorite thing. It's like the best kind of therapy you could ever have. Um, and then at the end, you've made something really pretty. Um, but yeah, so I also use bending tools and I cut on my anvil. I use shaping tools and all these different things. Um, you can kind of think of hot steel, like, uh, like, uh, forbidden clay. <laughs> think of it like, uh, instead of using your fingers, uh, you use a hammer, which is nice. Um, so you can see here some examples of things that blacksmiths make. It says they produce objects such as gates, grills, railings, light fixtures, furniture, sculptures, tools agriculture implements, decorative and religious items, cooking utensils and weapons. I've made pretty much all of those things, <laughs> which is fun. Um, and yeah, I, I love it when people come to me with a weird project. Someone brought me a weird lantern that they wanted me to forge, and I've been forging that recently. Um, and I'm super here for it. Uh, but you, I have some pictures on here that are, um, uh, I think this drawing is actually a drawing that Picasso did. Um, and then I, I'm always hard pressed to find pictures of women blacksmithing. And then when I do find them, they're wearing dresses, which just blows my mind. I just, come on, let them wear pants. But anyways, that was a way long time ago. It seems stressful, but I don't wear dresses when I blacksmith. Um, and then we have this medieval drawing of some blacksmiths, uh, working. One of them is like blowing on the fire with something called a bellows. And the other one is working on a horseshoe which is actually called a, a farrier that's the type of blacksmith that that is um but yeah so those are what those mean and then i'm just making sure okay uh these are some things i've forged recently um i made these candlesticks for my grandmother's memorial um so they fit together and they are supposed to represent my grandmother and my grandfather's soul together which i um i painstakingly made i love them um I love making roses as well out of steel, um, any type of floral element or all natural element um, because it lasts way longer than that actual flower. Uh, so these roses will last longer than I will or anyone who buys them will uh, because they just last forever, which is pretty cool. Um, I get really dramatic with it. Sometimes I'll put a, a metal rose in the middle of a bunch of real roses and then I'll let those real roses die. And then the metal rose is just like there. It's very... Uh, morticia of me but i'm here for it um let's see so there's another picture of the rose that's when it's just out of the fire and it is still glowing in the center um so with our roses you actually start out with just a blank sheet of metal um that has some cuts for the petals and you forge out the stem you hammer the petals so that they have texture and they get wider and then you roll all of that. So that's all one piece of metal. There is no welding involved in that. And it's just one piece that you forge and roll. They're called Russian roses. They're really, really cool. Um, these are some bottle openers, but I really enjoy doing twists. And so I was. this is an example of some crazy twists that you can do in metal by just scoring, like using a chisel. Um, so using a chisel and hammering can create these weird twists. Oops, I did that. Sorry. Now we're on to welding, apparently. <laughs> That was my finger small. So I also teach welding. I love to weld. I actually have been welding since I was nine. 
Uh, my dad and my grandpa are hot rod people. So I learned on a really old school truck. And I just remember being so scared. Like when my grandpa was like, you can do it. And I was like, I can do it. and I was really, really afraid that I was going to mess up his car, but I didn't. So that's all okay. <laughs> and all I was doing was tack welding. So um, I was just putting in some metal. Um, but welding is different than blacksmithing. Sometimes I get people and they're kind of confused. Um, blacksmithing is forming metal. So if you take a piece of clay and every thumb mark that you can make in that clay, you can do with steel and metal when it's hot. So you're kind of thinking of it in that way. You can also remove metal very similar to a big block of clay where you're pulling it off and then forming it into different shapes. Whereas welding is actually adding, fusing metals together to build bigger. Um, there are different types of welding. So I I uh, teach MIG welding, uh, so which is called a metal inert gas welding. Um, that's the one that's like, I call it a fire glue gun. You just point it at stuff and it sticks it together. It's the most fun, the easiest type of welding to learn. Um, and then once you've learned to MIG weld, you can build, I mean, the world was built on MIG welding. Um, and so that's that's like the best one, I would say, uh, for learning as a beginner, uh, because it is a bit easier. Um, it says here, and it's explaining what's happening, your, your welding gun, so like a gun, and it has wire that's running all the way from the machine. And that wire is carrying the electricity from the machine. And then you have a ground from the machine that's grounded to your piece. And those, those two pieces of electricity go boop, and they meet in the middle, which then makes a spark, and it melts all of that wire from the gun. And that's what the weld is. So you're actually added, adding melted material um to the the steel or whatever you're trying to weld together uh to fuse them together um and usually usually if you're doing it right your welds are stronger than the actual material so if anything goes wrong when i tell people this if you've welded like let's say you're welding a trailer for your car and uh those welds need to be really strong because you know it's always bouncing up and down on the road um if anything goes wrong Pay attention to your weld. Like if it breaks, look at what happened. Did it rip next to the weld? Like did the material rip or did the weld break? If the material ripped, that means that the weld was actually very strong and it was the material that couldn't handle it, which is how it's supposed to be. If the weld break broke, that means that it uh, had some kind of impurity in it or a crack or rust that got inside of it because it wasn't protected by the shield gas um, that we use. And so that's why it broke and that's, that's not what you want. Um, so there's that. I love MIG welding. Um, honestly, I do a lot of blacksmithing and then MIG welding together. Uh, and then I build from there. So it's a lot of like I'm forming and shaping metal and then I'm putting it together with my MIG welding. Um, I've recently been really into riveting, though, which is like a, another way of putting two things together where you stick it through a hole and then hammer both ends. Um, and then it's riveted together. And that's how like all buildings until 1911 were made with just rivets. Um, which is kind of crazy. Uh, I have an old school rivet forge. I don't want to like jostle you guys around right next to me. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That one right there is my great grandfather's forge, um, which I inherited. It still works. It's a coal forge. So you use coal instead of gas. And um, that is the forge that they would take to build skyscrapers with. Someone would heat a rivet up in that forge, pick it up with tongs while it was yellow hot, throw it to a guy who is up in the air somewhere on the building he would catch it and then bang it into the iron um and then someone else would bang the other side so that they can fuse them together it sounds nuts because it was nuts because everyone was nuts back then there was no regulations um then there's tig welding tig welding is if you watch welding videos which is kind of a weird thing but i watch welding videos tig welding is super pretty it creates rainbows when you're welding. It's super, super small, though, like very, very fine detail, detail work. Um, and so it's a, it's much harder to learn because you're using both hands. One hand is controlling the welding gun while the other hand is adding material in. And your foot is actually adding um, the heat so you can go up and down on a pedal like sewing. So you're using three of your of your limbs to weld like this. And it can be difficult to learn um all at one time but when you get good at it it's really lovely um anything under pressure so like brewing equipment um anything that goes very deep in the ocean or if it's going into space it's tig welded tig welding is extremely clean you have to clean everything with acetone first like a 
like you're doing surgery, um, make sure your gloves are clean and your hands are clean when you're doing it or it will contaminate it and that's not good. And then afterwards, most TIG welds are x-rayed to tell if they're good or not. Um, so it's one of those one of those fun things, but you know, it's always fun to pass an x-ray test and be like, mm, whatever, whatever, and then move on. Um, but TIG welding is really, really pretty and actually it creates rainbows on stainless steel. And so I, I actually use TIG welding like painting. So if I have stainless steel, I'll TIG weld, but I'll use it like I'm painting with it and I'll draw whatever, whatever I'm feeling like drawing on there. And it turns out really cool. And then I can weld those things together to make my sculpture. Um, so I, t I definitely, and that type of um, coloring is called heat patina. And I definitely enjoy using heat patina on a lot of things. And TIG welding is like my easiest way to get to that. So, and then last but not least is forge welding. Again, if you've watched Forge and Fire, you've probably seen them forge weld. It happens a lot with knife making, especially when you're making something called Damascus, which is layered metals that are layered together and then folded and then welded and then folded and then welded. And you can make your own unique pattern every time. There's actually an infinite amount of Damascus patterns that you can make. Um, but forge welding was one of the original weldings. Um, it's when you get the two pieces of metal so hot, they're like, glowing yellow almost bright bright white and the surface of them is jiggling like jello because it's almost a liquid and then you smash it together uh to forge them into one piece that's what forge welding is um and that's done in the forge and blacksmiths are known to do that quite often um so and it's a fun one it's a fun one to do for sure it's definitely very sparky uh, but so is mig welding um so on the right is mig welding um it's more sparky on the left is the TIG welding where they're holding the gun in one hand and the rod in the other. Um, and then right in the center is the forge welding where they're hammering. Um, and the, all of that sparks right there is the flux that you use to help the, the metal stick together. It's just like bursting out of the center of the metal, which is crazy and fun. It always makes you um, like feel like, did I hit anything around here? <laughs> did I hit my eyeballs? I don't know, but there's a lot of stuff happening, but we're always safe. So that's welding. Um, welding is building. We love to build. Uh, we want to build the world, right? Let's build a better world. and <laughs> Let's weld it all together. <laughs> I'm fine. Okay. Um, and then I also teach plasma cutting. Uh, plasma cutting is dope. Just FYI. It's so cool. I experienced plasma cutting in college, um, for the very first time. And I am obsessed. Here's sugar. It's sugar. What are you doing? Let's go. I'm sorry. I got distracted. Sugar, there's people here. No, okay, bye. Okay, see you later. I don't want to talk to you either. Um, plasma cutting is... So plasma is a form of matter, um, and it is created by exciting electrons. Um, so when you excite those electrons so much, they form plasma. And then through this system that they have, the plasma is being shot through a gun um, with really, really high pressured air. And it can cut uh, with what I have. It's called a CNC machine. So it's a, a cutting numerical. Wait, cutting numerical. What is the other C for? Computerized numerical cutting. Sorry. <laughs> um, and it, you can program in any design that you want. And the plasma cutter will blast that out of steel. Um, it'll also do it out of aluminum, stainless, copper, and brass. Anything that can hold a charge. So it has to be able to have an electrical charge on there. Um, so it's very, very cool. I love it. I do a lot of plasma cutting. Um, it's one of my favorite, 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 favorite things to do because, I mean, you just feel so darn cool. Um, and yeah, so my plasma cutting machine, her name is Beauty, and she works my, with my air compressor. His name is Beast, and they cut out beautiful things. Um, so here's a video of this working. It's just a compass rose, so like a, a compass northeast, southwest kind of situation. So that was that. It's very cool. Um, I love it. Like I said, um, I have been recently working with uh, tattoo artists. It's something I'm calling inked in metal, where they design things. Um, they design a design, and it's like a limited edition. Um, I can only cut it in my in our agreement. I can only cut it 30 times. Um, and 
I cut it out of metal for them, which is really, really cool. And then I cut it out of metal for anyone who wants it. Um, and I've been recently just working with women tattoo artists. Um, and I have made some really gorgeous things lately. Um, love them so much, especially when you can cut really, really, really big. Uh, my table can cut a four foot by eight foot piece of metal. Um, so you can cut a giant, like, think of like a giant fence that's eight feet tall. And I just like, and then put a bunch of designs in it. And you're like, oh, I'm living in my own fantasy. And it's really fun. <laughs> um, I see I have a chat. Is there water underneath the plasma cutter? Yes. So this is a water table. Um, there's not always water underneath them. So if you don't have a water table, the table underneath it actually has to be like three feet deep to catch the plasma but the water is catching it and so it's not blasting through the bottom of the table and it's actually cooling all of the elements down at the same time so that they're not warping or getting um uh getting ruined as you're going uh so yes that is water it's also mixed it's water mixed with a solution called green cut plasma fluid um it the green cut plasma fluid i search forever trying to find this type of fluid because i'm trying to be environmentally conscious um, I don't like using things that are bad for the environment or bad the way that they were made chemical wise. So I searched forever and then I found this. It's environmentally safe. Um, and it, what it does is I add it to the water in the plasma table and it keeps the pH neutral, which means that all of the pieces that fall into the water will never rust. Even if I left in there, left them in there forever, they will never, ever rust because of that fluid. Um, it's also like weirdly good for your skin um it's just like a, they, they did all this stuff i found it in canada thank you canada they know what they're doing um and i'm really excited about that uh but yeah so that's what's in there and um it's not always like that though sometimes they're giant but usually that means the table itself is also really giant and can cut like 24 foot by 12 foot pieces of steel um so yeah really good stuff my plasma cutter does cut up to three quarters of an inch of steel though which is kind of giant when you think about it um it's huge. <laughs> um, and then I think is doo -doo 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 -doo. I think that was it. Did I do it? No, thanks for listening. It was a very short little thing. Um, I how do I do this? Stop share. Okay. Now I want you guys to ask me questions. I do have a demo coming up at my shop uh where people are gonna come and watch me blacksmith. I was thinking about blacksmithing today but i honestly feel like it would look so weird in a video and you'd get real bored because i have to wait in between the heats right <laughs> <laughs> so not not today but please ask me questions i'm i'm an open book yeah girls do you have any questions um do you like have like classes for kids to do i do yeah i teach kids from ages 9 to 12 you can forge with your parent and then 13 and up you can forge by yourself um, I, I believe in trusting teens, um, to do their thing and to take care of their bodies. And I've worked with teens for about 10 years now teaching them. Um, I taught at the Art Students League of Denver with teens for seven years. Um, and that was just like an open kind of format. Let's make art and eat pizza together every Friday. I taught a sustainable fashion class to teens and I teach blacksmithing to teens and I love it. And it's a teen only class too. Cause I think that teens work better together than they do with adults. <laughs> um, so yes, I do. Um, and it's very, very fun. We always make fun stuff. Usually people get really into chopsticks. I don't know what it is about chopsticks and spoons, but that's like the thing that people want to make. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyone else have a question? Mm -hmm. Actually, I remember you saying that um, you were in college when you you tried out welding and blacksmithing. Is that correct? And you said, yeah. I, I actually really love this. And mm -hmm. Yeah, I, uh, I have a weird history. So I learned when I, I was nine to weld and my dad, like I've been around it forever. But I went to school for pre-med um, because I thought I was going to be a friend happens like the coroner with the with the dead bodies. Um, I, I wanted to do that, but I had to go all the way through medical school to do that. And uh, I just decided like it was not not for me. I love school, love it so much, but I just couldn't do 12 more years of it. It seemed like too yeah. much of my life to give. Um, so I had like a, you know, like a mental crisis, <laughs> just one of those things. And I dropped pre-med and I added evolutionary and ecological biology, 
history and studio arts. Um, and in my studio arts uh, there, I went to CU Boulder. They have a gorgeous metal shop there. And I started, uh, I was taking a jewelry class and then I, I was like peeking. It was a classroom in the back of the metal shop and I was like always peeking around the door. And then I just took a blacksmithing class and that's history. Like I couldn't, I couldn't get enough. And so I actually forced the metal shop um, guy, the guy who ran the metal shop to create an internship around me because they weren't open. But, uh, and that was that. And that's just a. Uh, That's what I do. And I love teaching people this. It's my favorite. So that's why I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So fun. And I'm glad you found that path because you seem so happy with it. And, <laughs> you know, you can pass that infectious enthusiasm on to everybody else that walks in your door. Yeah, I yeah I'm glad I am too. Don't be afraid. Don't be <laughs> afraid to follow your dreams. It's, uh, it might feel weird. But uh, I mean, I do think that 2020 was the reason I did this because it showed everyone like how short life is. Um, and so I, uh, I just kind of jumped for it and I was like, I'm just going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> like, and I'm very happy that I did. So it was scary though. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. It's scary, but sometimes fear is a good indication that you're going along the right path. Right. Um, because it means it's going to be, it's challenging. <laughs> right. 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 Uh, what is the biz biggest project you've ever made? Okay. Oh, the biggest projects I've ever made. I've made a lot of really big things. Um, there's this historical house in Boulder that was trying to restore uh, the archway. It was this giant stone archway in the back of the house. Um, so the, the owners before them had walled it up and just put a small little door in it. And so they wanted us to restore it. And so we built a steel archway um that supported the stones of the house um and so i would say that was probably 12 and a half 13 feet tall uh by like 10 feet wide um yeah it was fun yeah <laughs> Stuff like that. I, think, I think that's the biggest thing i've made i also i also made a really large sculpture with a german blacksmith that came into town um and it was like a it it made rainbows when you released it. So it was like a big wave like this. Uh, but then when it clicked down, it was a giant bench for people to sit down and discuss wow. things on. Yeah, it was really fun. Uh, I liked that one a lot. And that, that was a a group project. He was just in town and and uh, my friend, a bunch of blacksmiths just were like contacted and we just did it for a weekend. Um, wow. So yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was really fun. <laughs> yeah, I bet you every day is different. Good question. Every day is different. Every every day is different. Like I, I've been working on that weird lantern I told you about. And then uh, the other day someone brought in horseshoes and, and snowflakes for me to, to weld together for some reason. They had like it was a memorial for them. And I was like, OK. And then uh, I, I also get a lot of just custom art. People want me to make them custom art for their family members or whatever. And I'm so here for all of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so but most of my time is classes. Um, recently it's gotten really busy, so I, I teach a lot and, uh, I forge a lot, but I do, I do also still make art. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Very, very cool. I want to make bigger stuff though, Izzy. Of course. Once you learn to weld, you always are like, I can do it bigger. And that's <laughs> what I want. <laughs> so, uh, come back to me in a couple of years and ask me that question again. I'll be like, it was 50 feet tall and a thousand feet wide or something like that. <laughs> Is it super heavy though? When you make oh, yeah. it the, the bigger you are, the, mm -hmm. my goodness. You gotta have the tools to move it around. That's for yeah. sure. I also make a lot of stuff that, um, for me personally, I'm a small person. So I've learned to uh, just make things to work smarter, not harder. Essentially, that's how I've learned. And like, I, I was always the only woman in any of the shops that I worked in before I did this. And so I was always learning how to make it easier for myself because I don't like. It's not that I didn't want to ask for help. It's just they would always tease me and I was over it. Um, and so I have made a lot of projects in my life that are made in sections that then when they're on, like that I can pick up personally. And then when I install them on site, they bolt together or they weld together and you can't see or it's incorporated in the design. Um, so that's kind of how I work because I, I would just prefer that <laughs> instead yeah. of this giant massive thing that I can't move around. Yeah, very mm -hmm. smart. Mm -hmm. oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. 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 Anything else? So have you ever been hurt from the tools? Uh, 
Yeah. Okay. So I teach a safety course at my shop. Unfortunately, the way that I went into the shop world uh, was with no training. <laughs> like nobody told me anything. I didn't go to school to be a welder. Um, I, I went to art school. That's And then I went straight from school and decided like, yeah, I'm going to go and weld in these professional shops and I'm really good at welding. So I passed their tests without having to go to the uh, the welding schools. But I was not really familiar with a lot of power tools. Um, and so I have been hurt. Um, I, I am very insistent now on telling people the right way to do things because no one told me the right way to do it. I had to find out. And I, uh, an angle grinder, angle grinders are so interesting. They're the coolest tools, super useful, really easy to carry around, dangerous and angry. They're just always angry at you all the time. They're like, oh, an angry tool. And uh, they're the easiest ones to take advantage of, to think that, oh, yeah, I can just do whatever with. And then and then all of a sudden um, they explode. <laughs> and so, oh, yeah. And so, yeah, not great. And so one of those uh, ate into my knuckle, this knuckle here. Uh, and it thankfully uh, just missed the tendon. Um, so that was fun. And then I will tell you, don't ever do power tools when you're tired. Uh, my job or a lot of shop jobs, uh, but not anymore, but they used to start at like 6 a.m. And I was really tired and I was like drilling and I didn't clamp it because I was tired and I was just drilling into it. And then the drill slipped and I drilled into my arm um, oh my and goodness. I and that sucked. Yeah. And I and I did, again, just miss the tendon. Um, but it uh, and thank goodness my hand works. <laughs> so It could have been way, way worse. But I've learned a lot of um, a lot of stuff. And now I'm trying to just immediately pass that on to people. <laughs> And yeah. I, I, I enjoy showing people how to use my tools because tools are really, really useful. Like, um, like I said, I'm a small person. I got an awesome giant saw. Her name is Eva and she just rips through metal. Like she's the best. And I love her so much, but I can understand why it would be scary because it's so loud and it's this like spinning blade of teeth. And I just want you to know it can be safe. Like you are safe if you're doing it correctly and this is how you do it correctly. So Yes. And yes, ow, Izzy. <laughs> yeah. It actually weirdly didn't hurt until hours later. I think it was shock, but it was just one of those like, oh, that's my heart. <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> what did I do? Yeah. And then blacksmithing is you're playing with fire. And the weird thing that comes with that is you just get used to being burned. I think it's a similar thing to being a chef um, where you just it's just one of those things that is part of your life. And you just are like, OK. And you just keep going. <laughs> and it's mm. actually really funny when people are in my class, they get tiny burns. I, I have like a list uh, from most likely to happen to least likely. The most likely are tiny burns from the scale that's coming off the steel, similar to when you're frying things. And then they and then the little bubbles of oil get on you. Um, just little ones, not big ones, because those can really suck. Um, and it's amazing to me that when people take my class, they don't immediately like be like, I'm done. They're just like, I have to keep hammering. Right. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> good for you. Up his nails, uh, right? <laughs> yeah, it comes with the territory. Uh, but that's okay. I, I just think like, when I grow older, I look at my hands now and I'm like, yeah, when I'm really old, I'm going to have like witch hands and I'm so here for it. I hope people think I'm like in the forest, like. <laughs> There's all the burns on my arms. <laughs> yep. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah. I love how you've named your your tools and things. Girls, girls have names. that too. Huh? I asked the girls if they love that too. Like I, oh, I yeah. was thinking that I should name my oven and name my <laughs> like refrigerator. <laughs> oh yeah, they have personalities. That's for sure. I also name all my plants though. So that's a thing. <laughs> Shop has a name, and and it, and all the tools have the stickers with the na their names on them. I don't know if you can see where am I? Oh yeah, do you see this tool right here? Yes, it's a it's a treadle hammer. So it's a hammer that you use with your foot. And her name is Betty Ann Basher, um, because wow. she does the bashing for us. She's the best. Um, she's my. <laughs> she's so good. I love her so much, and everyone's always like, "Oh yeah, Betty Ann." I'm like, "Yeah, Betty Ann. She's the best." <laughs> So fun, yeah. It's I mean, why not? Give them personalities. Oh yeah. yeah. Makes it a lot more fun, right? It does, yeah. yeah. And like uh like my forge is your majesty, she's the best, and uh I love her and I always thank your majesty. Thank you, your majesty, for your work today. <laughs> she does a lot of work for me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wow, sounds very fun to work with you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really weird 
which yeah, is fun. Like, just FYI, you're allowed to be weird. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's like yeah. a relaxed environment for people to work and have fun in and be creative and mm -hmm. accepting. I'm trying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I hope so. That's what I want. That's what I'm trying to give to people. And uh, so far it's working and I'm really excited about that. Um, honestly, the majority of my customers are women, which is fantastic. It's like my favorite thing ever. <laughs> um, it's working. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Awesome. Yes, indeed. So most of the work comes from, um, oh, somebody's coming in right now. Hmm. I met them. Um, most of your work oh. comes from people coming to you and saying, hey, could you make this for me? Or do you ever seek out projects? Well, so the way that my business is meant to run is like a makerspace. So it is a makerspace. Um, I teach classes every week. I have three blacksmith, three or four blacksmith classes every week. I teach MIG welding and TIG welding twice a week. And then I offer open studio hours, which I think is the most important oh, okay. thing that I do because I wouldn't have been able to learn the things that I know. Cause like I said, I didn't go to a traditional trade school. Um, I learned because I always had the tools available to me. I was very lucky. Yeah. I went to school that had a great shop. After mm -hmm. that, I got, I, I learned right after I graduated, I lost the facilities because you graduate and you're no longer allowed to be there, which is a bummer. Um, and I lost the facilities and I was kind of depressed for a year cause, and I didn't know why. And then I realized it's because I didn't have the tools that like brought me such joy. Um, so I inherited the stuff from my grandfather and my dad gave me an old welder. And like, I was very lucky to just be able to have these things and then continue practicing my art and my, my personal thing that I love doing. Um, and then that just turned into somehow like linking up with other blacksmiths and, uh, you know, uh, working with them and using their tools and getting more tools because they just give them away for free because that's what you do when you're in a community you share with people. Right. Um, and I love that. It's like, and that's why I started teaching. I'm like, I feel like everyone needs to know what this is. Um, and, uh, and I understand everyone who would say, I really want to get into blacksmithing, but an anvil is $600 or a thousand dollars, a forge is a thousand dollars. And then I have to get hammers and tongs and material and, and I have to have a backyard or somewhere to put it. And it's, um, very restricting, which I completely understand because I used to have to travel with my anvil and forge between any apartment that I would live in, or if I was living in someone's house, it was like in their backyard or whatever and i had to explain to everyone over and over that i wasn't going to burn their house down and like right. all of these things and it was definitely a labor of love and so i want to give that to people here's the tools use yes. them i have this space um love it. and then get better at what you're doing and maybe then you can get your own tools but you don't have to do it right away um and so yeah that's that i have open studio and that's my biggest thing um, I offer 20 hours every week um, and I have people who come in and regulars who just blacksmith with me or weld or I had some artists in here that were building the frames for some Dia de los Muertos like sculptures that they were making um, right. uh, and they took a welding class to learn how to weld and then they came in, came in for a month to make those sculptures which is really cool. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. such a neat business model because people can be so <laughs> proud that they did it themselves learning the skills that you taught yeah. them and yeah you, and then yeah, continue. watching people doing it and yeah wow yeah, it's really cool it's definitely very addicting I warn people if you like making stuff and then you learn how to do this you're gonna be addicted <laughs> just <laughs> you're gonna be like, I can just make that for my house I can just forge that for my room or whatever and it's just because blacksmithing has always been about making beautiful utilitarian objects so like objects that are meant to be used every day, but they're also very pretty, like in hand forged and handmade um, and uh, will last forever. And so that's a lot of what people come in here and make. Like last night I had a class of seven people and I had, let's see, I had a couple who was apparently they were in a war and they were each making a pair of tongs to see who could make like cooking tongs to make see who could make the best one. Um, then I had a woman who was making a wine glass holder. So it sits on the wine bottle and holds the glasses. I had a banana stand um, and a cheese cutter. I had a snake candle holder and a fire poker. And wow. all of those things can be used, right? But they were all yeah. so unique and gorgeous and just like really, really cool. And I and it's always different every time. I love it. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> Very 
Very neat. So who, mm -hmm. who's all excited to go to uh, Ash's studio and learn all this? <laughs> I had some Girl Scouts here and they did uh, the snake making. Uh, they made snake necklaces, which every time I teach that class, it always uh, it, half of them, maybe like a third of them end up actually making a necklace. The rest of them are just making a really cool snake sculpture. <laughs> just like, this is my snake and he's doing crazy stuff. And I love it. That's my thing. I will never, I'm not a, I, I don't say no very often. I'm a yes and kind of person, unless you're not being safe. Um, So like, I'm like, make snake sculptures um yeah. but yeah i'm very excited and i think uh when is the oh yeah december 2nd i'm just doing a demo so it's me demoing blacksmithing and you can come in and sit down and eat food and hang out and ask me questions and then i also cut on the plasma cutter as well um so you can see that whole process in real life <laughs> um and so that'll be fun i think i have a couple tickets left to that it did fill up pretty quickly yeah i think awesome. i think an entire troop bought it because someone bought like six, 13 tickets at one time <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i plan on doing more with you guys definitely if you want to do it tell your troop leader i don't know how that works but tell yeah. them <laughs> yeah yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm, tell mm -hmm. your troop leader or your parent to tell your troop leader or whatever and on our girl scouts of colorado um web page we do have information for hardy and fuller for them to to search and find and then they can connect with Ash directly and say, "Hey, we want to bring our whole troop in and Ooh, eat snakes. It's fun. Yeah, <laughs> snakes. Have a birthday party. I don't know. I have had some teens uh, doing my open studio, which just warms my heart because it's not a lot of teens that will do that. They'll take the class and then they, you know, school. I understand school is demanding nowadays. Oof, I don't even know how you guys like have lives, um, but it's like demanding. <laughs> and so I was surprised when a couple of my teens did sign up for the open studio and were coming back in to continue working blacksmithing and stuff, uh, which is awesome. And one of them just finished a door knocker for their bedroom door. So that ah! brother had to use it all the time. That's what she said. <laughs> That's that so, so cool. I know. It was really, really cute. It, uh, they tied a knot in the middle out of steel. So I like to tie knots with steel. And so they tied a knot right in the center. And then there was a back plate and it goes clang, clang. And you have to like similar to a castle, but for her bedroom door. <laughs> Fun stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love it. Oh mm -hmm. my gosh. I'm already thinking of all these kind of things it could make. <laughs> all these things. Actually, that's my question to all you guys. What would you want to make? Just throw something out there. I want to see what your, your ideas are. Um, a lamp that looks like um, there's like a dragon sitting on it and yeah. looks like it's lighting the fire in the lamp. Oh, Easy. We can do that. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, who's next? Hmm? Maybe, maybe like, oh. Go ahead, Stella. Oh, it muted. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> How do we unmute you? Okay. Sorry. Okay. Uh, uh, probably maybe like a sunflower. Oh, I love that idea. I like sunflowers a lot. Okay, okay, cool, cool. Now I'm like thinking, now you're giving me ideas. This is selfish of me. I'm like, mm, I'm going to make all these things. Yeah. <laughs> but then is he look, easier you, for is me to show like you. He's thinking. Is he, do you have an idea? You look like you're thinking. Get your thinking face. I don't know what I would make. I think it would be really cool to make something. Yeah. Just anything. Cool. Yeah, I get that. Um, I do have a giant book of ideas um, that I plop down in front of you so you can, like, look through. Because I do get that question a lot, like, what can you even do with blacksmithing? And I was like, well, first of all, blacksmiths built the world, so everything. <laughs> but to narrow it down, here's a book. <laughs> and here's pictures that you can choose from so that you don't feel overwhelmed. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Who sword. else? What? I would make a sword. A sword? Nice. Yeah. That's a big one. Everyone wants to start with a sword. I'd say uh, let's start with a tiny sword, like a like a hairpin. That's a sword oh, or a cool. letter opener, and then we'll work our way up. I usually tell people like knife making. Again, if you've watched Fortune Fire, those people have been forging for years, just like forever. Um, and so they're masters. I'm a master. I have my ten thousand hours of working and blacksmithing um, over the years, and I always tell people to make a good sword, like your first good sword that's like didn't break can actually be used and sharpened probably takes about a thousand hours of forging 
um, to get it to get it right. Not that sword specifically, but a thousand hours of forging swords to get good. With right. a knife, it's like a hundred, a hundred hours to until you finally make like you're like, look at this knife, it's actually good. <laughs> Right, um, right, but everyone right. has to start somewhere. I never want to discourage you to, and I can teach you to make your first knife for sure. But that's why I said start here, and then we'll go here. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good tip. Awesome. Yeah. Who else? Vivian or Samsung SM? I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> no. I think I'd make a dinner bell. Ooh, a dinner bell. <laughs> Ching, 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 ching. <laughs> yeah. Nice. The only real idea I would have is just to make something similar to a spider. Do that spider? I love that idea. I love spiders, and you can totally do that. Yeah. I saw a guy. I this saw is a actually person... a tarantula plushie I got from California. Nice. Love me a good tarantula. That's awesome. You could totally. I'm like make the that. only one in my family that isn't scared of spiders, so I embrace it. <laughs> so, yeah. so then make big ones and put them around. <laughs> nice. Uh, I was watching someone forge a, an octopus the other day. Um, very similar, eight legs, you know, similar thing. We would just make sure everyone knew it was a spider instead of an octopus, obviously. <laughs> but it's definitely doable. You could even weld all the tiny hairs onto the legs, make it like really tarantula-y. That would be fun. <laughs> okay. Awesome. I love all these ideas. It's good. I like yeah. it a lot. I, uh, I think I have a snake. Let me see. Oh, yeah. I'll show you. I, I love snakes. Um, you know, most people are scared of snakes. And then the snake thing that we do, I made um, this snake, and it's a crown. You want to see? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, how cool. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like all copper on the side. It's very cool. So these are the type of snakes that I was talking about for that one class. Yeah. Um, next time I'll make a spider for my head, Vivian. And that would be even better. I'm really into, f I'm not going to lie to you guys, this year I've made myself like 20 crowns. I wear a lot of crowns. <laughs> like when I'm not looking like this, which is constantly dirty and, you know, in my overalls, I wear crowns <laughs> everywhere because why Why should I not? And yeah. so then I forge them because I want them to be specific to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or if I watch a fantasy show, I see a lot of their jewelry and I'm like, oh, okay, I want that. I'm going to make it. And then I make it, and it only fits my hand. Like, it's very specific. So lots of stuff like that. <laughs> wow. Nice. Yeah. Super nice. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, mm -hmm. thank you so much for your time. This has been absolutely yeah. fantastic. Um, yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm excited. to come in and see. You and, <laughs> yeah, and thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Because I'm glad that you guys came. I think you're cool. Yeah. Well, hopefully you'll see them <laughs> soon. <laughs> yes, I hope so. If, yeah, I hope I'll see you either in December or during one of your troop things. If you come in here, we'll we'll make some cool stuff. It probably won't always be a snake, but um, I give your troop leader like a menu, and then you get to vote on what you make. Um, so that's really fun. <laughs> awesome. Lots of cool stuff. I'm surprised you. The last time they didn't pick wands because I love making wands. Wands are awesome. Magic yeah. wands, make your own, change the world, right? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thank All you, right. everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Great. And uh, Girl you. Scouts will maybe see you another time. <laughs> yeah. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye from the spider. Spider, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.